Hi there! Welcome to class. I'm Miss Faust. Please make sure you have paper up. You do? Fantastic. And a pen or pencil. Yes, yes, yes. You're reading the board, aren't you? Writing practice. We're going to have a writing practice. It's always good to practice writing. It's going to be a literary review. I'm sure you've heard of reviews of movies, of books. Yes. So we're doing the same. Of course, we're not doing of the movie or of a book, but we have stories, short stories, and poems, don't we? So it's going to be called a literary review because these poems and these stories are not your leisure reading materials, but your literary reading materials. Fantastic, huh? Okay, so are you ready for the assignment? Are you? Fantastic, so let's do it. Switch over here. Okay, here's your assignment. Oh, don't, don't worry. I'm going to read to you an example of something that you can do. Okay. I need you to write a review. So when you're reviewing something, you know, there's reviews of restaurants. And sometimes restaurants get really poor reviews. And they may have to do a total change in their restaurant. Or sometimes they even close. And then there are those restaurants who just get one great review after another. So it's all about, you know, it's all about telling people, yeah, this is good. This is a good product. I love it. I recommend it. Everyone should come to this restaurant. Everyone should read this book. It is a good read. Okay? So that's what we're talking about when we are talking about reviews. Reviews can, can be great and sometimes... Oh, not so great. Yeah. And sometimes, as a result of one review, people may not go to see a movie or buy the book. Wow. It, yeah. In other words, it can help sell and it can also help not sell. Okay. So, I need you to write a review of one reading piece. Okay. Here are the writers again. Writers slash poets. Auden, Neruda, Teyes, and Achebe. In case you're going, oh, great. What did Auden write again? Let me tell you. Please make sure, folks, that you write this down just in case. It's a great review. Yeah. You know, it is May, nearing the end. Oh, we're reviewing, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> Writing practice, the readings. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. Okay. So, when we talk about Auden, his piece was what? The Unknown Citizen. Wonderful writing piece, wasn't it? Fantastic. Neruda, woo! All about the enemy. And we sure learned something about the speaker and the enemy, didn't we? And we've got Tayas, lather and nothing else. Now, do you want to go to that barber shop? Um, you're going, well, maybe, maybe not. After all, that barber really prides himself on doing a great job. And not Chepe. Marriage is a private affair. It is, isn't it? So, Tayas and not Chepe are the writers. In other words, of short stories. On and Neruda are the poets of two wonderful poems. So, On, the unknown citizen. Neruda, the enemy. Teas, leather, nothing else. Achebe, marriage is a private affair. So, yes, you're going to do a review of one of these literary pieces. I know, they're not the titles right here. They're the authors. But think of it, behind that author is the piece. Is the poem or the story. Okay? Now, here you go. I'm sure you're loving this part. Use lined paper. This is the one time you're going, woo, no blank sheets. You got it. Lined paper would be really nice. So everyone understand? You're just doing one review. And I am going to read to you an example. And then I'm going to give you the specifics of what you are to include. So make sure you pay attention. You might want to take some notes. Everyone understand a review of one of these, whether it's a story or a poem. Okay, fantastic. Let me read you the piece. This is a review of, here we go. See, so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to read to you this. It starts right here, ends right here. Okay, everyone got that? Everyone got that? Okay. 
Yeah, with some notes on the side. <laughs> okay, this is a review of Margaret Wise Brown's, here's the title, Good Night Moon. You would um, underline it because we're talking about a book review. So I'm reading to you a book review. That is okay. The way this review is written, it can be applied to writing a review of a short story or a poem. The only difference here is, instead of underlining the title, you're going to put it in quotation marks. Double quotation marks, double, double. Okay, so we have Margaret Wise Brown's Good Night Moon. Good Night Moon by War Margaret, if I can talk, by Margaret Wise Brown is one of the books that followers of my blog voted as a must read for our children's book August 2018 readathon. Come check it out and join the next few weeks. Okay, that part, you mean, you don't have to worry about your blog and all that, but I like the way the review starts. It's very nice. This picture book was such a delight. I hadn't remembered reading it when I was a child, but it might have been read to me. Either way, it was like a whole new experience. It's always so difficult to convince a child to fall asleep at night. I don't have kids, but I do have a five-month-old puppy who whines for five minutes every night when he goes in his cage slash crate. And then in parentheses, hopefully he'll be fully housebroken soon so he can roam around when he wants. Parentheses. I can only imagine... I babysat a lot as a teenager, and I have tons of younger cousins, nieces, and nephews, so I've been through it before, too. This was a believable experience, and it really helps show kids how to relax and just let go when it's time to sleep. Okay, so the first part with the title, the name was up here, and the bottom block. If you want to in include something like that, that's fine. Make it more realistic? Okay. Here's the whole paragraph. Good experience. Gives you a basic idea what it's going gonna, it's gonna to be about. Obviously, help little kids fall asleep. It's a nice picture book. They'll look at it and they'll go, hopefully after a while, okay? After a few minutes, they're going, not because they're bored, because, but because they're, you know, they're looking at the pictures and they're starting to think, oh, I'll be so nice to So then they fall asleep. <laughs> Let's read the end. The bunnies are adorable. Remember, it's a picture book. The rhymes are exquisite. I found it pretty fun, but possibly a little dated given many of those things aren't normal routines anymore. That's okay. It's a little negative there, but it's so surrounded by such positivity that people, when they read this review, they, they're not going to be turned off. Okay? They'll still want to buy this book. And it is a pretty known book. Good Night Moon is a pretty known, well-loved book. Okay. But the lessons to take from it are still powerful. Loved it. I want to sample some more books by this fine author and her illustrators. Again, the author being Margaret Wise Brown. Okay. Any questions? So her recommendation, I mean, this rec person's recommendation I shouldn't say her. I'm not quite sure now if it's a female or a male by the last name. I think it's the last name. Maybe it's the first name. Oh, yes, it's the first name. So this gentleman's recommendation is go for it. This is a great book. It's got a little, it's a little outdated, but otherwise it's fantastic. Beautiful pictures. Rhyming is fantastic. You'll love it. It'll help you put your kids to sleep. They'll enjoy looking at the pictures. And they'll go into sleepy land soon. It's fantastic. Okay. So, a wonderful review. Okay. Right here. You can see again what it looks like. Okay. Any questions about that? Good review, huh? Yeah. So, we have that. Here are the items I'd like you to include. And you basically heard um, these items indirectly in my reading. 
as again, I know it was a book review, but it applies also to a story, a poem, for that matter, even a movie. And even in a sense, you could, you know, a little stretch it a little bit and help, you know, with some of the items that I want you to include. You could write it a restaurant review. There you go. So these are the items, folks, I'd like you to include. Title and writer's poet's name. Okay. So please, just like um, this reviewer had the name, okay, uh, Margaret, and then the title, and it was underlined because it's a book, a picture book, you're going to put the quotation marks, okay? You're going to not, please don't just say Auden. What's his name? W-H? Okay. Pablo, Anando, Genua, please. They're full names. Okay, so it's one of the first things. I need you to do, in a sense, this reviewer did a very brief summary of it. It's a book, pictures, beautiful bunnies, lovely rhymes, and it helps children to understand. It's time to relax and, ooh, let's go down to sleepy land. Okay. All right. So with some picture books, you can't exactly do a five-sentence review, uh, you know, as in summary. It, doesn't, it just doesn't work that way at times. A brief summary of the piece. And I do mean brief. Give me a flavor, just like this reviewer did. The bunnies, the rhyming. Um, you know, the bunnies are adorable. The rhymes are exquisite. I found it pretty fun, okay? Uh, it really helps show kids how to relax and just let go when it's time to sleep. A believable experience. Because, you know, you might have some picture books where you're looking at it going, what? That can't happen. Did ants really do that? And it does the little critters. Okay, so a brief summary, a flavor of what the poem, the story is all about. Catchy, be catchy. Again, the bunnies are adorable. The rhymes are exquisite. Okay. An evaluation of the piece. Evaluate it. This reviewer did. I find it pretty fun, but possibly a little dated, given many of those things aren't normal routines anymore. But the lessons to take from it are still powerful. Okay, a little negative there, but that's okay. Nothing, when you really think about it, is 100% um, perfect, positive. There's always going to be something. Your reviewer could love the book and recommend it, and somebody could read it and go, oh my gosh, that was the most book. I don't know how they reviewed it. It's ugh, boring. Ugh. Okay, the pictures are ugly. I mean, what is this? Is that not, what's the storyline here? What's going on here? I don't understand the plot. Okay, so does that make sense? Evaluate it. Um, do you like the way it's set up? If you're talking about the poems, do you, um, do you like the idea of in a chat based piece, you get a little background of Nigerian customs? You know, the Igbo tribe versus Lagos, the city. The different cultures and, you know, and the tribal views. You get, a, you get a little bit of that kind of information. So does that make sense? So evalu evaluation of the piece. Does it, does it really give you the Nigerian history? The poem, the unknown citizen. Does it really make you feel like people are just numbers? So, an evaluation of the piece. Now, these two, in a way, go together. Do you recommend this story slash poem, why or why not? That's one piece. End with a strong conclusion. They go together. Reviews should always have strong conclusions. Don't leave people hanging and say, yes, I recommend it, period. That's great. That's not a strong conclusion. Is there a way for you to say it? So it's not, yes, I recommend it, or no, I don't recommend it, okay? Do you recommend this story slash poem, why or why not? Can you say, you know, that you like it without coming on and say, yes, I recommend it? Loved it. I want to sample some more books by this fine author and her illustrators. There it is. The reviewer just recommended it. 
But did he come out and say, I recommend it? No, he did not. He said, loved it. Line, exclamation point. Does that make sense? Then come out and say, I recommend it. He said it indirectly, and that's the strong conclusion. So why or why not? Okay. You might say, well, wait a minute, Spouse. You didn't exactly say, why, 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 why not? Throughout the piece, he does tell you indirectly. He ties it up at the end. Indirectly throughout, he's giving you the why. Okay. Well, look at the wrong piece. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I hadn't remembered reading it when I was a child, but it may read to me. Okay, I can only imagine. I babysat a lot, so I've been through it before. This was a believable experience, and it really helps show kids how to relax. Okay, those are the recommendations. Okay. Those are the whys. Okay, all right. Um, believable. It talks about, it, it makes kids feel relaxed. Okay, and it's the kind of book that, if you're a babysitter especially, you want to pull out in case you're going, oh my gosh, i got to get these kids to sleep before their parents come back. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Oh, get, get a good mood, a good night mood. Woo, got that. Ah, look, there you go. Yeah, okay. There's your recommendation. So you don't have to go, loved it, and then go, it's believe. Okay, do you can do it beforehand, but end uh, with a strong conclusion. Loved it. I want to sample some more books by this fine author, and her illustrators. Okay? That's the way to do it. So why or why not? Yes, you might say, no, I don't recommend the enemy. Okay, then throughout, you're going to sprinkle reasons why you would say, gosh, no. It's not understandable. It's difficult to follow. I'm just giving out thoughts. Okay. Any questions whatsoever regarding this review? No? Okay. Uh, but if you do have any, let me know. Remember, please check your spelling and punctuation along the way. Okay. For your title, please do. Um, you could do a simple, um, like this person, uh, we have like the person's name. Uh, you could say, Jimmy Reviews, W.H. Auden's, The Unknown Citizen in quotation marks, and then you start. And then give present again the title along with the um, writer's name. Does that make sense? So like right here, so we don't end up with the notes. Does that does that make sense? You could do something like that. On Goodreads if you want it. You could say on um, Amazon or however. Okay, does that make sense? You could do that. Fantastic. Okay. All right. If you have no questions, we'll move on to our daily question. Woo! We have a saying today. What does reach for the stars mean? That is a saying. Okay, reach for the stars. When people say, hey, David, you gotta reach for the stars. David's supposed to think what? Is he supposed to actually think, oh, I gotta go out there and try to get a star or go, I can't reach there too far. What does it mean? What does, what does, yeah, it's cute, reach for the stars mean? One last time. Here we go. So you're becoming a reviewer of a poem or story. Just remember, you can recommend or you can not recommend. It's up to you. Okay, I'm leaving it to you. But again and again and again, if you do have questions, you're struggling with this review, let me know. Um, here to help you, okay? And I'll be only too happy to help you. I do wish you a great day. Till next class session, bye-bye.